Wallahi, those who don't cover themselves, they can say what they want. They are making themselves cheap, very, very cheap. And they are insulting the other sisters or the others of the same gender who may not have exactly what they have. They are adding so much pressure on society and community. People are dying as a result of wanting to be size zero. Do you know what happens? They used to say, oh, this person's a size 10. Well, mashallah, not bad. Size 8, okay, fine. Sorry, I should have started at 14. Uh, <laughs> then also it's say, alhamdulillah. Okay, they get down until they get to size 1. <laughs> you almost, you have almost disappeared. What happened to you? You don't eat? And after that, no, size 0. Hello, sister, where are you? You were here a minute ago. What happened? Oh, totally invisible. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Don't let this happen to you, my beloved brothers and sisters. You need to understand the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, that's the second category of prophecies. Those prophecies that were seen at the time of the Prophet sallallahu and they grew. And the third category, those that were prophesized, they are seen in our lives. Those that are prophesized, that will be seen still to come. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. Let me give you some of these prophecies. Did you know that the Prophet sallallahu says there will come a time when immorality will increase so much so that sexual encounters will become a norm of the day such that people will engage in intimacy in full view of the public. So, so much so that the most moral from amongst them, the best that he or she will ever be able to say is, you know what? If you want to do your thing, there is a wall. Just go behind it. Astaghfirullah. That's in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. Immorality will increase. People will become loose in terms of moral behavior such that they will literally engage in sex in public. And the most upright from amongst them won't even be able to say, don't do it. But he or she will say, why don't you just go behind this wall to do your thing? Astaghfirullah. We see today, my brothers and sisters, we are living in a hyper-sexualized environment. Everything is about sex. We cannot deny that. It was a prophecy of Muhammad sallallahu One might ask, well, there are prophecies. These prophecies, are they evil? What are they? Some of the prophecies are depicting and showing us that sin will increase and it will increase. Some of the prophecies are actually good prophecies. For example, when we are taught that the prophet Jesus, may peace be upon him, is going to come back onto the earth. That cannot be something bad. It's something good. So some of these prophecies are good things, not bad things. And some of them are permissible things. I give you an example. There is a prophecy. The prophet wasallam says, there will come a time when you see the Arab Bedouins who don't have shoes to wear, meaning who did not have shoes to wear at one stage, they will be so wealthy, they will literally be competing with one another, they will be competing with one another regarding the height of the buildings that they build. No one can deny this narration. A few years ago, we wouldn't have known, we wouldn't have seen, but now we see. One says, you know what, in Makkah al Mukarramah, as you walk out, you see these tall, buildings is it a bad thing the answer is no it's not a bad thing no hadith says it's an evil thing it is necessary you know i remember once and i'm going to say this because people say astaghfirullah I, you know once i was sitting in the mataf true story and i met a brother saying astaghfirullah look at this these guys these are all signs of qiyama look at them they are preparing for the jal's arrival and i'm saying hang on brother what are you talking about look at this building Look at how tall it is. You know which building I'm talking about. The ones just outside the haram. Look at how tall they are. I said, but brother, you know they have to cater for 2 million, 3 million, 5 million hujjaj, which is a small, small, small percentage of the 2 billion that we are on the globe. How long did it take you to make your hajj? He says, well, I applied for 3 years and I got, got it after 3 years. I said, you know, there are people in Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, various other countries. It takes much longer for them to get to hajj. So, they have to accommodate. So that's why they have to put up buildings going upwards because they cannot do it. Going sideways. No one wants to stay far from the haram. No one wants to live in 
expensive accommodation and no one wants to stay in a small room. Everyone wants a big room that is cheap, that is right next to the Kaaba. Everyone wants that. It's a fact. Everyone wants, if you say, what's your ideal accommodation in Makkah? Say it must be close, must be a good room, must be cheap. MashaAllah. Come on, you have to sacrifice one of them. If it's close, it won't be cheap. Right? And if it's a little bit big, it's not going to be cheap either. And in Makkah, trust me, it's always fighting for space. So I said, well, they decided to go upwards. It's a sign of Qiyamah. So it's a sign of Qiyamah. There are so many other signs of Qiyamah. By the way, we got up, we fulfilled our Salah, and we were walking out. And he says, would you like to join me for supper? I said, oh, where do you stay? He was quiet. <laughs> Allahu Akbar, where do you stay? <laughs> I looked at him, I said, just tell me, where do you stay? He said, you know, astaghfirullah, I stay in this building. <laughs> I said, well, they made it for you. Perhaps you are a moving sign of Qiyamah. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. They made it for you in order to accommodate you and those who want to come for Hajj. So the point I'm raising, it's, it's not necessarily an evil thing. If it is a necessity, it has to happen. It's not a sinful thing if there is a necessity. But if you are just, want, if you are just bragging about it, it becomes bad. You built a building, 30 floors. I'm building 31 floors. There's no need for it, but I'm putting 31 because I want it to be higher than yours. The minute the, another brother hears that, he says, I'm putting up one with 60. Then I'm putting up one with 100, like an auction. Then it becomes bad. I hope you're following the point here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. So that is a prophecy of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, an example of those things that are not absolutely evil. They can become evil if the intention is wrong and if it's unnecessary, etc. Then we have another prophecy of the Prophet ﷺ where he says, There will come a time when nothing will remain of Islam except its name. And nothing will remain of the Quran except its drawing. You know, the writing. The masjids will be packed and they will be very well built and beautiful. But they will be void of guidance. A person will go into the masjid, they will come out with no guidance at all. Nothing. You have beautiful mosques. Millions of dollars are spent to build the mosque. You go inside, the imam cannot even read the Quran. You go inside, there is no even lecture. There is no Islamic program. The masjid is now just the function is ceremonial. That's it. Sign of the hour. It has happened, it is happening and it will happen. That's a bad sign. How many people, what's your name? Muhammad. But the brother has a bottle of alcohol in his hand. That's a prophecy of Muhammad wasallam that people will have... Islam only as a name, nothing more. Let's not be moving signs of the hour. Your name is Khadija, Fatima, Abdullah, Muhammad, Zakaria, whatever else your name might be. Remember one thing, you need to live Islam. Don't let it just be your name. The Quran, don't let it just be written. A lot of us have beautiful Qurans. When we get married, sometimes we give a gift of the Quran. I know it happens in a lot of parts of the world. That Quran is just on the shelf until 30 years later. Subhanallah. 30 years later. <laughs> Talking about 30 years later, there was something I read this morning. They say, you know, normally as Muslimin, we have happy marriages by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But once in a while, you get a marriage where the husband feels he's in a jail. He's doomed. So the man says to his wife, 20 years later, after marriage, 20 years after marriage, he says to his wife, do you remember just before we married, your father caught us together. Whoa, that's not supposed to have happened. It's supposed, you're supposed to have met me with the blessings of my father in the presence of some mahram or at least with them knowing and perhaps supervising somehow. Anyway, yes, I do remember, she says. And he put a gun at my head and he says, you marry her? Or I will jail you for 20 years. And she says, yeah, I remember that. I'm so sorry, you know. I do remember that, yeah. And this man is crying. And it's looking so romantic, right? 20 year anniversary, that's what it was. Wow. And she says, oh my darling. Yeah, I do remember that 20 years back. Ooh. But why are you crying? He says, because if I was jailed, today I would have been released. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. <laughs> if I was jailed today, I would have been released. Divorce will be on the increase. There we are. Another prophecy. There will be lots of divorce. 
marital problems, leading to adultery, leading to so much more. So much adultery, so much fornication. People won't bother. It won't even tickle them. When a mu'min commits a sin, he or she feels in the heart, what I've done is wrong. That's a sign you're a mu'min. But there will come a time when people won't even feel it in the heart. When people won't even feel it in the heart. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us. The hadith says, there will come a time when killing and mass murder will occur. People will die in large numbers. There will be lots of disasters on the globe. And there will come a time when the murderer who is murdering won't know why he is killing. And the one being killed won't know why he is being killed. Take a look at the chaos on the globe today. Prophesized by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. People are killing, not knowing why they are killing. Who are you killing? And why are they dying? And the person dying, I don't even know why you are killing me. There are Muslims, the name of Islam being used, killing other Muslims, just calling them kafir, fasiq, fajir, whatever other name, in order to justify their killing. And they are killing others who are absolutely innocent wherever they are on the globe. And they're just saying, no, they deserve to die. But why? I don't know. They just deserve to die. Sometimes the instruction of someone above, go out and massacre, murder. And what has happened? They're doing it. Why? I don't know. My boss told me to do that. But these are innocent human beings. No. And the person says, why are you killing me? I don't know. I was told to kill you. Imagine, these are the prophecies of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says there will come a time when people won't be bothered whether what they are eating is actually halal or not. When you say this is doubtful in Islam, by right, if you have a doubt, you're supposed to be leaving it in order to save yourself. The probabilities or possibility of you consuming haram would be eradicated because you didn't consume it. But today, even that which we are told is haram, people say, well, it's okay, it's fine. Not a problem. They will go out and gamble. They will go out and do so many things. These things have been prophesied by Muhammad sallallahu He says, knowledge will be snatched away by the death of the scholars until the ignorant will be considered knowledgeable and they will be asked questions. They will respond in a way that their misguidance will lead to the misguidance of others. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. It's important to look at where you're getting your knowledge from. People have misconstrued, misinterpreted the entire Quran or parts of it. And they are teaching it to others, pretending or making it out to be the, that the Quran is a book full of barbarism or that promotes mass murder and so on. Yet it is a book filled with peace and justice. How? Well, you need to learn. Similarly, there will come a time when people will not respect their parents anymore. Not at all. They won't be bothered. These are prophecies of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imagine where he says, That hadith I spoke about at the beginning, hadith Jibreel. In it, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, give me some of the signs. And he mentioned some of the signs. From amongst them, he says, a woman will give birth to her boss. Slave woman will give birth to her master. The meaning of that can be taken in so many ways. One of them is children will be ruling their parents. You and I know today we can't even tell our children anything. You say something, that's it. Life becomes a mess. So people just let it pass. Let it happen. Dad, this year, holiday, we're going to Lankawi. If we don't, you're not my dad. No problem. We'll go to Lankawi this year and next year. Huh. Welcome, Dad. You're a rich man, huh? Mashallah. Thereafter, we have another narration. The Prophet ﷺ also says, zaman. There will come a time when, and this is a sign of the hour. A sign of the hour. Time will be crumpled. So, 45 minutes that I've already spoken will just seem like 4 to 5 minutes, right? Allahu Akbar. They are making a sign to me to say my time is up. It's a sign of the hour. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, it's a sign of the hour. The time flies. Time will fly. That's a sign of the hour. Getting a little bit more serious, what that would mean is 10 years will pass by like one year. One year will pass by like a month. A month will pass by like a week. A week will pass by like a day. A day will pass by like an hour and so on. Take a look at us. 
a lot of us, if you were to think about the past, a few years ago, you were just a child. A few years ago was the day when you got married. I see some people shaking their heads. Don't worry, you'll get married, inshallah. You will be married one day, inshallah. May Allah make it easy. But these are the prophecies of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa I've only mentioned some of them. And inshallah, within the next two days, we will be going through a few more. Some of the, my colleagues will probably speak on other topics. And I will be back with you again, inshallah, with a little bit more of this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us all. We are so, so grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for having given us a lot of these signs and prophecies. And they have indeed come true. There are so many of them. And indeed, it, they should strengthen us in our belief. And we know that everything predicted and prophesied by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has either come true during his lifetime or later on or is about to come true. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all ease and goodness and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us the few good deeds that we have done. May he forgive all our shortcomings and strengthen us. Jazakumullah khair wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad.